guys, welcome to beautiful British Columbia, where it's always raining. Start of fall, pretty quickly coming up on us, so we're out in rainy season. Supposed to get a couple weeks of rain, so hoping most of the logging gates open up and we can get to some of the spots that we haven't been able to get over the summer. So for now, we're going to do some exploration on a new area. Logging's been done within the last two years, and as far as we know, no exploration. So let's get to her and start prospecting. So most of this portion uh, of the mountain is underlain with uh, volcanic tuff. You can see you have quite a decent amount of oxidization, which tells you there's an iron content in most of the host rock here. Right beside that, you have a snack, red huckleberries. Always a good tasty treat when you're up in the mountains. All right, so one thing we always check when we're prospecting is uprooted trees. You don't often find stuff under uprooted trees, but it gives you a good idea of the bedrock geology. Uh, we have actually found a couple veins this way by looking under uprooted trees. Uh, one of them which led to a bigger deposit, so never write off uprooted trees. Doesn't look like there's anything here, but always good to look. More cables. I bet you someone could make a fortune just collecting all these on logging roads. Okay, so here we have a argolitic, slightly tefacious rock, uh, which would be your host rock here. And you have... Uh, a contact here which looks like it was a calcite vein with oxidization and minor amounts of pyrite you can see the little bits of rust there and over here uh, you have a dike which is intruding uh, that rock and this looks like it's a slightly granitic rock uh, but it's got a lots of intrusions of small little calcite veins. And then right here you have a uh, shear zone which contains calcite and quartz carbonate. And you have minor amounts of pyrite cutting through the whole thing. So it's really fine grain pyrite. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything too crazy for mineralization or anything that's worthwhile to send in for testing but we are going to pull a sample across the entire vein and we'll just catalog it in case we decide to in the future. So you can see you have your host rock over here you also have your host rock over here and you can see where that vein is formed is right on the contact and it looks like it was formed on that contact as well so this dike uh, is I'd say about four meters wide and what a dike is is it's an intrusion of igneous rock So you have a bunch of hunks of quartz here, and it's running with uh, epidote. So you have an alteration of epidote in your host rock, which is pretty interesting. Don't see any mineralization.
Okay guys, we've come across a new showing here. You can see you have a exposure bedrock gossiness and there is about 10 meters of this exposed. You can see the oxidization on the rock your off reddish color and your sulfide staining which is your yellowish color so you have quartzite here uh, is what's left and deteriorated rock so you have pyrite disseminated through coarse grain pyrite So lots of it all throughout everything. We're going to pull a sample off this entire exposure. We aren't going to send it in for analysis just yet, but we are going to catalog it. See if we can find anything else. Do a little bit more exposing here. We've shifted locations to the other side of the mountain. And uh, we're just going to be taking a sample off of this gossamus exposure here in an old quarry. So on the other side, you have about a dozen different showings similar to this, but substantially bigger. Uh, you've got uh, grab samples, chip samples that are almost about an ounce per ton, 30 grams per ton, uh, free mill gold. What we want to do is pull off another sample from the base of this here so we can send it in for a test. So it turns out ants like uh, Gossin as well, and gold. Been leaning up against this bush for five minutes, and my prospecting partner came up to me, and I had red ants all over my back. There's been new logging done here, they're just starting. And they built a bunch of new roads. Supposed to be a bunch of showings up here, which were located in about the 60s. And now we're up here, got temporary gate access, and we we're trying to quickly see what we can find. So, first thing we came across here is a couple zones where you have pyrite impregnating your host rock, uh, some calcite and quartz carbonate stringers. The occasional speck of pyrite seen, but so far we're not seeing anything that great. So we have a zone of oxidization here, minor amounts of pyrite with arsenopyrite. You can see all in there, as well as up there. Little bits, free mill gold in there. But it's super, super uh, inconsistent. So a little bit of free mill gold, a little bit of silver, a little arsenopyrite. Pyrite looks like small amounts of uh, copper sulfides too.
So here you have a volcanic rock, which is uh, slightly argillitic. You can see you have veining all throughout, which is uh, quartz carbonate veining. But you also have which is your quartz. So you have intrusions of your quartz carbonate and calcite and your quartz is actually inside your country rock. So there's minor amounts of uh, disseminated calcopyrite in this area here, but nothing crazy. So we won't even bother taking a sample. I don't think it's worthwhile. You have epidote veining, alterations of epidote in your rock.